All right, let's have a look at this uh, four-stage compressor. Should be pretty good. I've already got one of the inspection covers off. Mm. Turbines. Everything's better with turbines. Yeah, 3,800 horsepower, four-stage direct drive compressor. Pretty serious. And that's the motor that drives it. Massive Toshiba three-phase motor. Pretty good stuff. I'm going to try and take that end housing off first and check out the impeller. Yeah, thankfully these were maintained by proper engineers who knew how to use anti-seize lubricants and things. And likewise they're not over-tightened. Actually quite easy to get off. It's good stuff. I think I'll take the last bolt out from the other side and just let this flange drop. It's the safest way of doing it. Well, it was worth a try, but I don't think I'm going to get that compressor wheel off. I did get the end off, though. <laughs> it's grub screwed, or not grub screwed, but pinned in. I'm going to need a special puller or something, or at least take this backing plate off. I don't have time today, unfortunately. I've run out of time. Yeah. Bit of pitting on the leading edges. And that's the gear case. Look at the size of that bull gear. It's huge. And that's vibration monitoring. It's all full of water now. It's dead. Looks like it's been raining inside here. Condensation. Anyway, that's all for today. And uh, yeah, I'll dig away at it. Monday afternoon after work, I think. Yeah, it should be good. OK, well that outlet outing wasn't the most eventful. I did spend a lot of time reefing on old bolts and taking things apart, but unfortunately I don't think I'll be getting that impeller or turbine off anytime soon. So it doesn't matter. Something to learn from. I'll have a crack at getting one of the Sentac ones, although that'll probably be the first one to go. Uh, at the moment I'm just trying to get this damn vibration monitor to work, but it's not even powering up. The LEDs aren't lighting up for more than a second, like if I just sort of touch the mains on and off, they do flicker into life, but if I uh, leave it on, it doesn't do anything. So I'm running it on 115 volts, which is, you know, it's rated 95 to 125 VAC, so I'm running on 115 at the moment, and it's doing sweet bugger all. So, I don't know, maybe it's because I don't have all the sensors hooked up. I'll have a play with it later, but the weather seems to have fined up for once. Which is kind of ironic, because it didn't while I was out in the field. <laughs> but anyway, this thing's... <laughs> it was probably faulty for a few years, like, nobody was probably... U they probably weren't even using the vibration monitor for so many years. Wouldn't surprise me in the least. So, yeah, it is all there, it's all hooked up right, but it's just not quite firing up. And I did check the fuse. See, if I jiggle the fuse enough, you can see. And the relay clicks out. Hmm. Don't know if it's a bad connection or maybe the filter capacitor in there's died or dried up. There's a massive filter cap, or well not massive, but fairly big for what it is. I wonder if that's dried up and dead. It's just not behaving itself. But yeah. Odd. Very odd. Anywho, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'm going to clean up and continue dismantling some air conditioners and things. While the weather's good, keep cleaning up outside, and uh, it's getting a bit better in here. Dad's been doing some fabrication work and other stuff, so uh, I can put some of this other stuff out of the way. Anyway, thanks for watching.